Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Chong and today we are taking a look at a couple new makeup items. We have the new Bobbi Brown Sculpt and Glow palette and we also have all of the shades of the v Violet FR Bizu Balm. So she just recently released a new shade so I ended up picking up the ones I didn't have during that time. So we're going to go through all five of those shades as well as this palette. So let's start off with the palette. Now this palette does come in three different color stories. I picked up the lightest which has pink glow full flush for the blush and golden light for your bronzer contour shade. And you can see here, you know, I actually, I don't have any Bobbi Brown blushes or contours or bronzers or anything to compare these to. So I'm not sure how the formula compares. The pink glow is the same as your typical pink glow highlighter that we see come out during basically every single collection. <laughs> so usually in different packaging. One thing I wanted to note is the packaging on this. We do have a magnetic closure. This is a pink, um, it's cotton. It's not quite canvas, maybe like a twill. So it definitely feels like it can get dirty fairly easily. And then we have the Bobbi Brown logo in gold on top of that. So this particular palette, let's go ahead and swatch this. We have four and a half grams of each product in here for the, the blushes, the highlighting powder, and the bronzer. So, you know, there's definitely plenty of product here. And let's see the pink glow is going to be a highlighter that can either be very radiant or very subtle, depending on what kind of brush you apply it with. You can see here that it definitely has a warm pink metallic vibe to it. It's definitely going to be a warmer pink versus a cooler pink. Now both the blush and the bronzer shade here, these are pretty firmly pressed in the pan. You can definitely pick up product easily with either something like a goat hair brush, uh, particularly undyed, or a synthetic brush. You want to go with something that has some density to it though. Don't go with something very loose and fluffy unless you want a very, very soft look. So again, this blush shade is called Full Flush and the bronzer shade is golden light and you can see that the pink is you know it's a neutral leaning warm tone pink there's a little bit of a satin finish to it same thing with the bronzer shade here in golden light and you can see that that definitely has kind of a yellowish orangey tint to it so it's definitely going to be warm tone and let's take a look at the demo of this so for the demo, I wanted to demonstrate how different brushes will work with these products. So on the right side of my face, I'm using more delicate hairs, such as the uh, Surat Cheek Brush, the Chikahoto FO4 Brush, and so forth. So those are gonna be some more luxurious natural hair fibers that are very, very soft. So you're not gonna get strong pigmentation levels from that, even when you build that up. And on the left side of my face, I am using brushes that are better suited for this palette in my opinion. So things like the Sonia G Classic Cheek Brush, which is undyed goat hair. You've got like stronger density there and so forth. So we're also looking at the Ruffer 24, which again, also undyed goat hair, but really, you know, the focus there is how dense this particular brush is. It's dense, it's tightly bundled, so you're not going to have a lot of movement of the bristles, so you can really pack on the pigmentation level. So you can see here, looking at the demo, how strongly pigmented this one will go. But again, we do have one, a palette, you know, intended for medium skin tones and one intended for deep skin tones as well. So I like how they brought out a few different options here. And overall, I would have to say that the products in here are nice. The blush and the bronzer shade, there's just a little more firmly pressed than I personally like. I would prefer them to be a little bit softer, perhaps either a little creamier or a little bit more powdery in the pan, but this is really pretty firmly pressed. So you can definitely still get a very nice look with this, but buffing the products into the skin is going to give you just a little bit more color and it's gonna bring out a little bit of that satin finish that you get from these products. Now, this is really more of a satin matte, aside from the highlighter. So you're just gonna need a touch of satin. There is no like glitter particles or anything like that in there. Now, as for the palette itself, I think it is an aesthetically pleasing palette. You know, it's very pretty. I like the way the fabric cover looks, but 
honestly, I would prefer something that I can wash makeup off of uh, more easily. So I wish it wasn't a fabric coating. We do have a full size mirror inside of the palette. And I think this is a great palette to have on hand, you know, especially if you are a makeup minimal minimalist or if you travel a lot, this is definitely something nice to have around. However, I just, I don't love the blush and bronzer formula. I, I wish it was just a little bit uh, less firmly pressed than it is. The highlighter though, if you've never used the Pink Glow highlighter from Bobbi Brown, it is a cult favorite. It's a classic and they tend to bring it out during every collection in some sort of special packaging. I have to say, I really do like the highlighter. I personally like to apply it with a fan brush, which gives you a lighter application and you still get this really nice soft shimmer. When you're looking at here at the highlighter, you have more of a metallic finish versus a glittery finish. You don't see any loose like glitter particles or anything like that. That being said, there is finely milled micro glitter in here. It's just not something very readily visible. You notice more of the metallic finish before you would notice any sort of sparkling effect. And honestly, it's pretty subtle, the, the glitter in there. All right, so let's go ahead and go through some comparisons. We're gonna start off with the blush shades. And I wanted to start off with a couple of Gucci shades. This is number three, Radiant Pink. And let's just see how this compares. I'm actually, I'm gonna swipe our comparison blushes vertically here and we'll put another layer of the Bobbi Brown there as well. This one here is number one, Silky Rose. And then let me get that Bobbi Brown shade. So here's the Bobbi Brown blush. And you can see when you put these up close, it's closer to the Gucci 01. The Gucci 3 is a little bit deeper and also has a little bit more of a coral appearance to it. That being said, shade one is still slightly warmer than the Bobbi Brown, but they're very, very close. Another blush it made me think of is Apple Blossom from the Chantecaille collection, the, the Wildflowers collection. And let's see how this one compares. Oh, no, this is gonna be more vibrant. And yeah, it's, it's gonna be a bit brighter. It's also slightly cooler in tone than the Bobbi Brown. And then this is the Sisley Lafito blush in number one, Pink Peony. Let's go ahead and put that one right there. And again, this one's gonna be a little bit cooler in tone as well. And then this is the Syrah blush in Tumafe Rougier. This is my closest shade in comparison, but you can see that this one here is also gonna be brighter and cooler in tone. Let's take a look at the bronzer contour shade here. And I don't have a ton of comparisons for that. Honestly, for me, um, for contour, I like this. This is Syrah Grisaille. You can see this is gonna be significantly cooler in tone than the Bobbi Brown shade. And when you read, you know, the description, it's referred to as a bronzer in some places and as a contour shade in other places. Perhaps that varies depending on your color story, but in this case, it's really gonna be more of a bronzer shade. So let's take a look at some bronzers. This is the Hermes number one to Tori. And honestly, this is what it made me think of right away. I'm just gonna put that one right there, but you can see that's actually gonna be a little bit lighter and more yellow than the Bobbi Brown. And this is the Guerlain Terracotta Flower Blossom uh, bronzer. And I'm trying not to get too much of the peach and the pink here, just so we can get a better idea of the bronzer, but you can see it's a pretty peachy bronzer. And this is Pat McGrath in Nude Honey. And let's just put that one right there. Again, that's gonna be cooler as well. I don't really have too many bronzers this shade because honestly it's not my favorite I tend to declutter those give them away to friends who it works better for their coloring so unfortunately you know those are gonna be my best comparisons but you can see how much warmer it is than those that I would typically reach for all right so let's take a look at a few comparisons this is the Chantecaille Lotus Radiance highlighter and this is also gonna be a soft pink highlighter but you can see this is gonna be a lot there's peach in there, but it's a lot lighter. It's more ivory-ish. And again, this is also gonna have a metallic finish, but it's slightly different. This is a little bit more of a powdery metallic. Another one I want to take a look at is, it's a discontinued blush, but this is the Givenchy Tint Couture Shimmer Powder in 01 Shimmery Pink. One of my favorite highlighters of all. 
and you can see that this is also going to be lighter in tone and this is bobby brown quartz glow so if you were to purchase the pink glow in the regular full-size packaging this is the packaging that it would be you can see this is much more of a golden champagne and this is chanel rev de camellia so this is our last comparison here let's squeeze that in right there you can see it's gonna be a little bit lighter a little bit more ivory base let me just do those side by side there's the chanel and here's the bobby brown so you can see the difference it's definitely going to be rosier with the bobby brown it's also a little bit deeper so overall i think it's a nice palette but definitely you know pay attention to what kinds of formulas you like because these are firmly pressed but overall i think it is a nice palette Def definitely great for people who travel or who are minimalist and kind of want everything kind of in one palette so yeah let's go ahead and move on to the violet v fr uh bisou bombs so if you're not familiar with violette fr it is a small brand started by violette the makeup artist who is in charge of guerlain right now and she's the one who's been bringing us all of those like innovative things from guerlain over the past year or so so she actually started this brand just just before uh you know she became the director at guerlain and she has a small curated collection of you know makeup products as well as some skincare products and everything i've tried from her brand so far i've really enjoyed so this is the bizu bomb and it is one of those matte lip balm lipstick hybrids it's really more of a matte lip balm uh, but it really gives you that blurred velvety lip look i mean very very blurred so this is our viola fr logo here on the top this is thin lightweight plastic we do have click closure here and you can see this is the actual product here so you can see that the actual bullet shape it's kind of like you know you've got that your slant edge but it's a little bulbous when you first get it so um you know slightly different shape than others and there are five shades so i have all five of the shades now these have two and a half grams of product in there and there's a two-year shelf life on these so this first shade here is called callison and we're going to do these on my hand and these are made in italy by the way so we'll just kind of make it a little bit darker there but you can see how you know sheer these can be you can build them up a little bit but they're never going to be super super deep uh this is the newest shade on my lips the amor Fu, and you can see that you know this is several layers so it's not going to get super dark but it will definitely give you that blurred lip look and this is the shade gimove and this is going to be your peachy shade here and you can see it's peach, but there is a slight touch of pink in there. Not enough to call it a coral, but there is, you know, a touch of that in there. So both of these shades are going to be warm. We have kind of this warm nude brown in Calisson, and then Guimauve is this like peachy shade that's, you know, it's not overly warm for a peach, but it is still going to be a warm peach. And then we have Batiste. This was the first one that I purchased, and I have to say, I really love this one. It is kind of your rosy nude kind of shade. It's really more of a medium rose, but because it can be so sheer, it you know works very well as a rosy nude. And then moving on, we have Suzette. And this is one of the ones I just purchased. Mine actually came chipped at the top, but it's not really a big deal. This one though, I think might be my new favorite. <laughs> so it's this really beautiful cool tone berry. And then this is the one I have on my lips. This is a new shade that was just introduced, Amor Fu. And for anybody who wants to wear red lipstick but feels like it's too much for them, this is a great way to start. You know, you just kind of get a soft red look. It's blurred. You don't have to worry about being super neat. You know, it's just, it's a really beautiful, easy to wear lipstick. So let's talk a little bit about the formula while we look at these lip swatches. So as I mentioned, we have two and a half grams of product. These are made in Italy and we have a two year shelf life. These are going to be a powdery matte lip balm texture to them. So they're very, very thin on the lips. You don't really feel like anything's there, but it does have a little bit of that powdery texture. This does not give you that tight dryness on the lips. 
uh, that you get with the old fashioned matte lipsticks. And just so you know, if you tried these when she first launched them, she did reformulate them last summer. And that was when she made them a little bit more hydrating. So I don't have any of the original ones. I purchased mine after the reformulation. But I have to say they're very nice. Are they hydrating and creamy and all of that on your lips? No, but they are a matte lip balm. So they're gonna give you a little bit of color without feeling like there's anything on your lips. So they're very weightless. Overall, I have to say I do really like these. That's why I ended up picking up the rest of them. But the thing that I really like about these the most is the level of blur that you get with these. You know, it just makes them so easy to use. And honestly, even other like blurred lip products, I feel like these are even more blurred on the lips than others and they are just so weightless on the lips. So I still, for lip balms in general, you know, I like that creamy, feeling satin texture and so forth. But when I'm looking for a matte, these are the ones that I really like for matte lip balms, you know, compared to like the Dior matte lip balms and so forth. These I think are better. Now, the reason I think these are better than the Dior matte lip balm is because I feel like the color stays around a little bit more. You've got more blurring and they are just a little bit more weightless on the lips. I feel like, you know, they're, they're just a slightly better formulation. Is it a huge drastic difference? No, but I would choose these over the Dior personally. That being said, I do really enjoy the Dior ones and I would still purchase those as well. But if you're trying to find you know which one is the best, that's my personal opinion on it. So I hope this has been helpful. And overall, I have to say, you know, we've got some nice, great basics. If you are looking for easy makeup, you know, the face palette is great for easy, you know, kind of, you know, a minimalist approach to makeup, not too many items on your vanity or your sink, wherever you do your makeup. And then these sheer matte lip balms, I mean, these are things that I like to carry around in my purse, have around at all times. I just think they're a really great product and I tend to reach for them a lot during the summer where I'm going with lighter makeup looks. And yeah, I just think they're great. So overall, you know, both nice products for me personally, between the two that we looked at today, I prefer the Viola FR Balms over the Bobbi Brown Face Palette but no regrets on either purchase. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you have a wonderful day.